Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to introduce Angie to you. Angie is uh, Angie is a leadership coach and she's a trainer with Ramana Communications, which uh, she founded. And her focus is on building leaders and teams. She's got over 10 years experience in human capital development that took her to various places, including the UK, India, and Ghana. She's the former Kenya manager of Edge Talents, which is an executive recruiting agency. So they focus on senior managers. And she has also trained in programs for African Management Initiative, where she's coached leaders across Africa. She's also worked for fellowship, leadership, uh, organ the programs with Acumen, uh, East Africa, and Vilgro, which is based in India. She's a certified life coach and works with individuals and groups to enable tapping into your highest potential. And her unique skill is in connecting you with your, with, by helping you communicate your complex ideas in a simple and understandable way. And she's very passionate about how people can thrive both at work and in your personal life. So what she's going to be covering today, it really has application across all areas of your life because it's more about um, managing yourself. Um, even though the title is talking about managing difficult uh, bosses and team members and things like that. Um, so yeah, so definitely, you know, same thing, get engaged, um, take notes, put your questions in the chat, and you'll have a great session. So Angie, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we are Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. Thanks, Beryl. Thanks so much, Beryl. I'm so excited to be here. So, yes, thank you, Beryl, um, for the introduction, the really nice introduction. As Beryl has mentioned, I am a trainer and a coach, and I've been doing this for about 10 years. And with Romana Communications, which I founded, um, it's in the last five years. And actually, my main focus and my main passion is to get people to enjoy their lives at work and at home. Uh, because if your work life is horrible, your home life will also be horrible. And if your home life is also horrible, I think it will affect your work. So my main purpose is to make sure that people are thriving. Um, and so before we begin, I just want to tell you like just a little key things that I'd like to, you know, with the people I'm coaching and training, the key things I like people to just know about my trainings and what I want from them. Um, uh, so you can see the first bullet I said, I really like people to be self-aware. Self-aware is just knowing who you are completely, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, like just having a full understanding of yourself will help you get to the next level. Okay, so as uh, as mentioned, I have been a recruiter, and sometimes you ask people questions like, tell me your weaknesses, and people go like, oh, I have none. For me, that is just a clear uh, lack of self-awareness, because everybody, everybody has something. Everyone has something that they want to work on. So I like guys to just be, you know, work on their self-awareness, uh, which is also linked to the authenticity. Like authenticity basically means being yourself, truly who you are. Like I'm sure you've heard like that saying that everyone is taken, so just be yourself. And I think when people are authentic, when you're truly yourself, your unique self, first of all, you are so unique, everyone is so different. When you're yourself, you're able to shine. Okay, you're able to bring out the skills and talents that you have by just tapping into who you are, not trying to be like anybody else. Uh, and also, like, to be honest, like, if you know today's chat, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions. Just be honest, because you won't get you won't get assisted, and I'll not even know the challenges you're facing if you cannot be honest. So it's good to just you know, like, just think. Um, I think as, as this is a session where someone, no one is judging. I just would like to like the, issue, the issues affecting you. And if you can be honest, then we can work through them, uh, which is related to change. I think the most constant thing in life is change. I don't know how many of you right now are, are in careers which you went to school for, or you're in the same career you had five years ago, or you're doing the same thing that you dreamt of when you were 10 or 15. So the thing about life is like, it's constantly changing. And those people who like adapt are the ones who are able to thrive. So I encourage people to not be scared, to just take chances, to take risks. Right now it's lunch hour and you're here in a webinar, like trying to grow yourself, trying to become a better person. So that's fantastic. So I really like encouraging people to always like try to think of like, how can I challenge myself? How can I be better? What can I do? What am I, have I been doing wrong that I can do better? 
and it's which is linked also to the last point, which is learning. I am a big believer that we never stop learning. If you stop learning, you're dead. <laughs> So even me, uh, when I give my trainings and my coaching, we do reviews. You know, I like to get feedback. I like to just become a better, better trainer, better coach. And as long as we are doing that, if all of us keep doing that, learning, learning, becoming better, we, we are able to like, we can surpass even our wildest imagination. So that's just as an introduction to who I am. Now, the topic for today is thriving in the workplace. So um, for a lot of people, you know, <laughs> I work with so many people and uh, for them, their workplace is a place they go, do what they're supposed to do and leave at five o'clock. And if they have extra projects, okay, fine. I will leave at seven. I will leave, but I don't like anybody there. I don't show myself there. I don't, sh I don't show up, you know, my personality doesn't show up over there. Actually, I don't even like my boss or I don't like my colleague. I mean, that is not thriving, guys. You need to be in a place where you feel like you can be totally yourself, you're productive, you know, you have the capacity, you're learning, you're enjoying, you know, your workplace, you're able to meet challenges and you're able to develop your talents and capabilities. That is what thriving actually means, okay? And so if you're thriving, you also, able to deal with the ups and downs of life because life is not perfect. You're going to face challenges. Maybe your work has so many challenges, but if you're thriving as, you're, as an individual, then those things, when they come, because they're going to come, okay, if all of us, all of us works means dealing with difficult things. When you're thriving, you're able to handle them. Okay, and if you're a team leader, you will know how to lead your team in a way that you're not always stressed. Okay, so. I think I've defined what thriving means and what I'd like for everyone. So now if I was to just take a poll, like how many of you have felt super stressed at work in the last six months? How many of you have felt so stressed in the last one week? How many of you have felt like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I need to change my careers in the last one year. I can tell like, you know, obviously this is the truth for so many of us, like feeling stressed is like a regular thing in the workplace. Um, and I'll tell you like stress doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Okay. Now, a lot of people have, you, actually I want to encourage, please don't take notes. Um, everyone is going to get a copy of this presentation. So just listen to me, internalize, think about your own situation. Uh, you can take a bit of notes if you want to write something down that I've said that you feel is, you know, uh, poignant, or, you know, but no need to take notes. You'll get this presentation. So it's common to feel anxious and anxiety is, is kind of, okay. Like feeling a bit stressed before, before meeting some client who you maybe you, you've been chasing for a long time. Um, and the feeling of anxiety is broad. Okay. People call it stress. Some call it, I feel the jitters. I'm feeling a bit nervous, uh, butterflies in my stomach and easiness, you know, uh, freaking out. These are all explanations of what anxiety is for different people. Now, is it bad to feel those things? No. They're an indicator. For instance, they're an indicator that you're about to do something, that uh, that you are striving for something, and, and there's an outcome that you want. However, too much stress, you're always nervous, always have butterflies, you're always like you're in a workplace, and you're always feeling just uneasy, that is not good. Now, there is good and bad stress, okay? Um, and I think I have some examples of some good kind of stress. So winning a race, uh, before anyone of us who's been, who's in a sport, who engages in sports or has been, um, has been in a team, you know that before a, a, before a game, you feel a bit nervous. Or when we were younger, most of us were in sports when we were younger. You, you, there's tension, but that tension also helped you win. It helped you go the extra mile. So there's some good stress, which helps uh, bring out your adrenaline. Okay. And also some things like becoming a new parent, you know, you're nervous, you're like, oh gosh, will I be a good parent? Is a, is a bad going to be okay? Am I gonna? That's, that's okay stress. That's some okay kind of uh, good stress. Uh, some people, I have friends of mine who like doing extreme sports, biking, um, you know, roller coaster things. Uh, people who love watching scary movies, which me, I do not. Uh, so that's, this is a kind of good stress. Okay. And I'm sure you have so many other examples of good stress. Okay. Now, what 
is bad stress. Bad stress is that stress that is not leaving. Okay, it's not. It doesn't leave you. Like every single day, you you feel sad, or you're irritable. You always have moods. You know, you're those who, who people go like, oh, that guy has moods, or that mama has moods. Okay, if you're always feeling worried and and you know and and fearful, and then you you find yourself like you're withdrawing from other people. Like any chance you get, you just want to go home and just watch your TV, watch your series. You don't want to engage, you don't. Okay, right now it's Corona times. Nobody's doing those things, right? Nobody's meeting with others. We're not doing gatherings, but you know what I mean? Like if you, if the thought of being with others, just you just want to run away from people, that's also a sign of like, there's something that's not all right. And um, and if you find like your sleep patterns are also, uh, are also erratic, like people like to say, oh yeah, team insomnia, team 2 a.m., team 3 a.m., you're up in the middle of the night, uh, that's also not okay. That uh, could be a sign that you are suffering from maybe fatigue. You have too much stress, and it's time to start thinking about what is it that's happening in your life that uh, that needs to be solved. Now, if you find you have all of this, I encourage people: it's time to see someone. Okay, see a counselor, see a psychologist. Like with Ramana Communications, I have psychologists who work with people who find all of a sudden they are so withdrawn and uh, it's affecting their everyday life. Now, if, you're, if you have maybe one of these, I'm not saying you're, you're depressed or, or you need help, but it could be an indicator there's something wrong. And if you find you have friends of yours who have, like for instance, social withdrawal, you know, you have friends who they disappear, they, they don't communicate with you, they, they don't respond to your messages, they don't pick calls. I think if they are friends of yours, people who are in your family and you're invested in their relationships, I think you can uh, try and find out what's going on because this is an indicator that things are not okay and they could be also suffering from depression. Now, let's go to this one. I don't, so I want, I'd like you guys to do on your, when you're on your own, just write down, like when you take have time to reflect, not right now in the webinar, but just write down, like, what stresses me? What are the things that stress me? So if you write down a list of the things that stress you or like the things that are stressing you, you'll, have, you'll know what it is that you need to work on, okay? Because if you're being stressed by the same thing that was stressing you three months ago, if the same thing that's stressing you right now was stressing you last year and the year before, I think you need to figure out what to do because you can't live like that. Okay, so write down what stresses me. You can write down uh, my job, or it could be my boss, it could be my sister, it could be my brother, it could be my wife, my child, but whatever it is. If you know these are the things that cause you a lot of stress, you can start working on them. And right now, like we're going to go into like, um, I'm going to teach you some of the techniques, some of the things that you can do to start dealing with stressful situations. Although we are talking about situations in the workplace, it does surpass. It's not just the workplace. These things I'm going to teach you are not just to be used in the workplace. You can use it also in your own personal life. Yeah. Now, workplace stress. I have done surveys with people working in different organizations, over 20 companies, and a lot of a lot of uh, responses I get from people are quite uh, uh, show that people ha have a lot of stress in the workplace, and it could be it could be related to the work, it could be related to the people they work with, but generally that's not a, that's not a way to live every single day of your life. Okay, and um, and and I've also found that most people quit their bosses. They don't quit their jobs. Maybe you really like your job, but this boss, you're like, I'm done. Or this colleague, or this scenario, uh, that's what people actually quit. So what are, the, what are some of the things that happen in the workplace that cause people so much stress? So I have some examples. I'll just give a few because, um, you know, uh, of time. Uh, for instance, I've encountered people, someone who told me like they, they have a boss who, who gives them a task and then five minutes later, the boss is like, have you done it? 15 minutes later, they ask you what's happening and they just give that task to you. And then sometimes they do emails where they copy everyone. You know, it's like, what's going on? That is like really bad. 
or some people say that they have team members who uh someone in your team who doesn't pull their weight like you end up doing so much work uh because some team members always have excuses they're not doing what they're supposed to do and they bring a lot of stress to you um so there, there are all kinds of scenarios and at the end of this uh presentation i'm going to try and cover i'm trying to answer some of the questions that you guys ask because some people did send in their questions and we're going to address those questions uh in this uh, at the end of this and um so i want to teach you how to one of the biggest ways to deal with workplace stress because workplace stress is going to be there um uh, but it doesn't have to always be there um so so this diagram in front of us over here it's from the it's it's uh it's called a model of aggressive and assertive behavior in the workplace and it's uh it's a research done i think by the harvard business school and they categorize people into four categories of communicate like of communicators and I'd like uh, on the x-axis, um, it's uh, it's the how you communicate with how much thought do you give to others? How much thought you give to others? And on the y-axis is how direct are you with your communication? Okay, now I'll explain this in a bit. So let's start with the uh, lower right box, eh? the one that says passive communicators. So the passive communicators, the, the characteristic of passive people is they don't they don't say anything they don't speak they don't say what their needs their wants their desires they don't express themselves to other people okay so someone who's passive they're always like just there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whatever people say they, they they really they don't uh they don't express themselves to others and what happens in the workplace that people who are very passive are always angry because if you're someone who's passive no one knows your needs, your wants, your thoughts, your desires. So it's like if you're a passive person and people in the workplace want to just pass out assignments, they want to do A, B, C, D, then they, they tell you you're the one to do it and maybe you can't do it. If you're passive, you just get angry and do nothing because you've not been taught. Okay. Some of this is like you've not been taught from, you know, in Kenya, over here in Africa, there's this cultural thing of maybe uh, young people, you're to be seen, not to be heard. So you learn that, okay, I should just keep quiet. I should not uh, let people know that I'm, I, you know, I'm ABCD. And honestly, being a passive communicator is really, really stressful. Okay. Um, and then on the, on the left, you have passive aggressive communicators. Now, passive aggressive communicators, they don't give so much thought to others okay and they're also not very direct so for instance someone who's a passive aggressive communicator they will show you let's say you make someone angry if you're passive you just show them uh with like madarao like they don't tell you you've made me angry you've done abcd i don't they will show you with actions and i've been told because i work because i'm a life coach and i work with couples and relationships too i've been told this is a very very um uh, a lot of women use it in their marriages where you don't tell somebody that you're angry but you will show them with your actions that is passive aggressive communication and what happens with passive aggressive communication you also don't get your way because people don't really know what you want Okay, and I even have an example of someone, uh, you, know, you know, I was coaching and they told me they had a colleague they had issues with and at one time the colleague, uh, their boss came and told them, hey, you guys, it was on a Friday, the boss said, can you guys come tomorrow? Uh, it's Saturday, I know, but please come at 9 a.m. I would like us to do APCCD. Their colleague, because they were angry with this person I was coaching, their colleague didn't tell them. So on Saturday, this person is just sleeping at home and then the boss just calls like, hey, why aren't you here? And she's like, oh. I didn't know I was supposed to be there. The post was like, I told, I told your colleague. And so that's passive aggressive communication. Like this colleague is not just telling this person, there's something that you did I didn't like, or you know, there's A, B, C, D. They choose, okay, I'm gonna hurt them this way. They're gonna suffer because when the boss knows that this link come on Saturday, it's gonna have repercussions. So if you're a passive aggressive communicator, I encourage you to please stop being a passive aggressive communicator. You can lose your relationships, you can lose your friendships, you know, etc. And you still don't get your way. Now, let's go to the top. I hope people are figuring out where they lie eh, as you go along. Now, <laughs> the, the top left is the aggressive communicators. These people are very, very direct. They are very direct communicators, but they don't give much thought to others. So who are these? These are the shouters. The people who shout at you, the people who think that the best way to get you to do anything is by being aggressive and showing me that they're the, they are, you know, they're the man, they're the woman. So 
aggressive communicators sometimes get their way. If they are the boss, if they're in senior positions or they're in positions of power, they will get their way. But what happens when you're dealing with someone who's aggressive? You don't give your best. You don't do your best. You don't do what you're supposed to do. You just go like, ah, they'll just shout, they'll just scream. I'm not going to be so invested over here. If I get another opportunity, the first thing I'm doing is getting out of here. So aggressive bosses also keep losing their team members. So it doesn't get anywhere. It can get you in somewhere in the short term, but it doesn't work. And especially if you're dealing with millennials, millennials want to be treated with respect. And everybody actually wants to be treated with respect. I would assume that most people in this call are millennials. I mean, we would want to be treated with respect. So if someone keeps shouting at you, you'll not even do a good job. You're always doubting yourself, you're second guessing, so you don't even try. And then the final one, the one on the top right is the assertive communicator. The assertive communicator is the ideal. So you're direct, you're direct. At the same time, you give thought to others. So you care about other people. So an assertive communicator expresses their thoughts, their needs, their desires, whatever. But at the same time, they consider the other person. Okay, they consider the other person's input. And most leaders, you'll find the most liked leaders are the ones who are assertive. They tell you what they want. At the same time, they listen to you. So that's the best way of communicating. Okay? I think you can place yourself. Now, I do know that sometimes it's not possible to be assertive with everyone. I know some people are not assertive with their parents. Some people have parents who, you know, from when you are little, you're supposed to just keep quiet and they tell you what you're supposed to do. Even now you're an adult. They don't listen. I have met people who are like that. Okay. So sometimes people choose to be passive. They're like, like ah, it's okay. Ah, whatever. I'm not going to be with this person all the time. But in the workplace, if you go to work every single day with somebody and you are passive, you're going to suffer a lot. You're also going to be, people will think that you're not a leader. You're going to be passed up for promotions. And generally, the, some people will take advantage of you. So I hope that table was clear and some people, you can place yourself a little bit where you lie. Yeah. Cool. Now, I'm not seeing the chat because I'm on the presentation, but at the end I can I can have a look at what people are saying. Uh, so as I said, being assertive, explicit and articulate when communicating and don't take the notes, just listen. Um, also, you know, being assertive involves a nonverbal skills, facial expressions, pitch of your voice. You know, people can tell if you care about them, if you're speaking to them nicely, even by the tone of your voice and your body language. Okay. Um, cool. And then, yes, I want you to know the benefits of becoming an assertive communicator. Okay. If you're assertive, you definitely make a great manager, as I said. Because you get things done. Because you treat people with respect and fairness. And when you do that, people will do the same in return. Okay. So most people who are assertive are quite well liked by others. And they are seen as leaders. And people want to work with you if you are assertive. But if you are an aggressive, you are a shouter, you are someone who plays manipulative games. If you are someone who is a passive aggressive uh, leader, people don't like you. People don't want to work for you. People don't bring their best selves to you. Okay, and, and then another thing is that people who are assertive, they know how to negotiate win-win because they, they are able to recognize the value, the value of someone across. You know, they listen to you and they're able to find common ground because life is not just going to go. If life is, you think life is about things just going your way, oh my goodness, you're, you're not ready for leadership. Leadership is about learning about other people and also doing what other people expect and want from you. And of course, uh, being assertive also you, means that you're a better doer in a problem. So but if you're assertive, you don't have to wait for people to do things for you. you. You know how to find solutions for yourself. And I can guarantee you guys, if you're assertive, you, you'll end up becoming less anxious and stressed. And then you would feel like you're, you're a victim. You would feel like a victim and you don't feel threatened by others. Because if someone comes to you with bad behavior and you're an assertive person, you'll be able to say, hey, a, B, C, D happened, and this is what happened after that. So, and you'll be able to like really voice your your concerns. You'll be able to voice your opinion without being scared. And then people, and you learn actually when you're dealing with people who are bullies. When you start being assertive, people who are bullies are actually cowards. I want to just let you know, people who are bullies are people who are cowards, and people who bully others they get shocked when people be when people 
uh, start becoming assertive. Okay, because they start losing a bit of that power that you've given them. Yeah, now how can we be assertive? Just learn how to value yourself and your rights, you know? Like you you really, you matter. You, you are an important person. Just, you know, uh, there are all these things that have happened in your life. You've done this, you've done ABCD, you've gotten yourself from here to there. Come on, you're such an important person and, and you deserve to be treated by other people with respect, okay? And I'm not telling you to have self-confidence, to have self-importance. No, I'm telling you to just, just value yourself and get a bit of confidence in yourself as a person. You can work on that. There are techniques, there are ways you can do that. And then learn how to voice your needs and wants confidently. Okay. Um, like, you know, some in, in our cultures, you know, there's maybe women don't know how, you know, like uh, I, I have found that sometimes women, you know, when I'm doing sessions with women, they feel like, oh, I cannot do this with, with this kind of, uh, if these are my colleagues, um, older males in my organization, they don't listen to me because I'm so young and, I, and I'm so small and I think, so just, you know, I think you can work on a lot of these things, but just learn to how to be, you know, uh, how to voice uh, what is that you want confidently and it will start working um and learn how to express yourself in a positive way guys there are people who don't know how to speak well of themselves it's a cult it's a kenyan thing huh it's like you tell somebody oh hey, hey that you have like a, a really nice uh you know that bag you have is so nice and tell you oh this one ah, this one just put it on the street you for how much like people don't people just don't like to be seen like they they are uh you know like you're up there you just like, like okay but i'm not telling you you feel like you're better than any other person, but learn how to just express yourself in a positive way because you're a great person. You deserve respect and you, and you actually need to start burning yourself and then to come to your head and you learn how to be more assertive. And then please learn how to be open to criticism, okay? Um, and criticism, we're gonna, learn, we're gonna do right now a bit of how to learn how to do that, a bit of how to learn how to do feedback. So just be open to people telling you that maybe your way is not the right way. That's also okay. And also, and most importantly, learn to say no. Learn how to say no. It's very, very difficult, especially for some type of personalities. It's very difficult, but it's okay to learn to say no, especially in the workplace. Because sometimes there's so many demands that are put on you and maybe you cannot handle or things are going wrong and you don't know how to uh, get yourself out of the scenarios. So just learn that it's also okay to say no. And you can tell no, you can even say no to your boss, but you, you have learned how not to say it properly. Yeah. Now, I wanted, uh, I put this over here because, you know, a lot of people speak about leadership, uh, the leader, oh, you are right now, maybe you're a leader. Um, I just want to just cover a short, you know, I do leadership coaching, but I like people to just know like where they lie in terms of their own leadership styles, because your leadership style can also affect the amount of stress that you have in the workplace. Okay. Now, these are just four. There's so many others, by the way, but this, I, I generally find them in the workplace. Um, the first one, as, as the name suggests, is called Country Club. Country Club is let's just chill and have a good time. This, if you're a team leader who's a country club leader, you just don't like to give people so many tasks. You, you just like to be boys. You want to be friends with your teammates. And that is, that is dangerous. Okay. Um, you, you, if, cause you value the relationship so much, you end up suffering because a lot of things don't get done because people are your friends and you don't know how to manage them. So country club definitely doesn't work. There's also the impoverished leader. This person is low task, low relationship. They don't tell you what to do. They don't tell you what to do and they also don't try to help you. So it's like, you're supposed to guess what you're supposed to be doing and hopefully it works out well. Now, a leader like this has teammates who are normally very demoralized. They are so demoralized because they, they feel like um, they don't know where they are going, okay? And another one that's very, this one is very common, very common in Kenya, authoritative, high task, low relationship. I tell you what to do, do A, B, C, D. Why didn't you do this? You need to do A, B, C, D. Last Friday, you're supposed to do this. And they don't care about your relationship with them. So they don't care what happens to you. They don't care this, what is what is, uh, is affecting you, uh, your work, or do you have the capacity to do what you're supposed to do? They don't. And authoritative leaders as well, because this one is also most likely to have even the aggressive communication style. So they also end up suffering because their team members also, they fear them. And if, if you fear your boss, I mean, you'll just be going there to work to clock the time and leave as fast as possible. As long as it's five o'clock, you're done. You don't even contribute. You don't want to be in the same space with this person. Okay. And now the ultimate, the ultimate, 
the ultimate uh, leadership style in the workplace is a team leader. And a team leader, yes, you are high task. Okay, so you know how to assign tasks to people. You know, you know your people's strengths. You know what they can do, and also you help them. Okay, and you care about them. So you build a relationship with them. Okay, and these leaders, they exist, they are there, but they are also rare. And this is something that is taught because most, what happens to most team leaders is that they become team leaders because they have worked in a place for so long, <laughs> you know, they've been in this place for so long, so they, you know, they were promoted, or they did their work so well that they became a team leader, but maybe they didn't have leadership skills. So they don't know, they just know how to do what they're supposed to do and leave. And so they become an impoverished leader. So these are some of the leadership styles that you find in the workplace. And um, the ideal, of course, is to be a team leader. Yeah, I put in this slide for leadership because um, I just want you guys to have an understanding of what it takes to influence other people. If you want to be someone who's able to influence others, uh, these are some of the things that uh, I find in those people. So the first one, as I've explained to you, is assertiveness. If you're assertive, by the way, if you start learning how to be assertive, to express yourself, your thoughts, your needs, you'd say, and at the same time, listen to what other people need, that you will ultimately start becoming a leader. Okay, and assertiveness works. The second one is like ability. There are people who influence others because they're so likable. This one, this one is like some people are just born with it. <laughs> of course, you know, there's coaching. I've seen, I have a friend of mine who coaches people who want to be in politics and, uh, you know, they're taught some body language, you know, how to smile more, look at people directly in the face, how to shake hands. You can become likable, but people who are likable, you can also, assertiveness can help you become a likable person. So if you're like a boat, trust me, you'll be able to influence people in the workplace. Because people generally like people they feel like are nice. Whether we like it or not, people people respond well to people who they think are nice. Nobody likes to respond to someone they feel like is nasty. And then another source of influence is uh, the people who are just so, you know, they're logic, they're rational. They explain things to you and yeah, you're like, wow, okay, I'll do this. I'll follow whatever you're saying. I will follow, I will listen to you because the things that you're saying, they make so much sense and I see where we are going. So there are people who use that as a source of influence. The fourth one is a leadership style. It's, it's also, you know, people who compromise. Like I don't have to be the one who gets everything. I compromise, it's a give and take. And if you're with someone who compromises for you, even you, you find yourself compromising for them. So it's like uh, it's 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 a it's a give and take, and the more you do it, the more someone you know is like this. The more you feel like this person, I can follow them. I can listen to what they have to say. I can do what they want me to do. And the final one is charisma. Now, charisma, charisma. You know what it is. There's some people who you know like the likability factor. Charisma. You find a lot of people. Some people become CEOs. You know, just because they had so much charisma, they in the, in the world they just went up, up. They did their work well, but they're also quite charismatic, and and they they're able to lead in a way that you know people feel like okay, this person can speak to media, this person can, you know represent, can represent us, etc. You'll find people who are charismatic in all areas. You'll find them in entertainment, in, you know, even religious organizations are led by people who have a lot of charisma. But you cannot just be charismatic and not have other things to back you up. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to put that in there as a way of understanding like some of the ways that we can influence others in the workplace and also outside the workplace. Yeah, this is the final thing that I want us to discuss today before I get into your question. Um, giving and receiving feedback is just one of the ways that is a tool that uh, you can use in the workplace to improve your work. And most people do not like feedback. When if someone comes and tells you, hey, can we meet in the boardroom? Uh, I want to give you some feedback. Most people get very, very stressed. They go like, what did I do now? Okay, <laughs> like, am I being fired? And it's obviously people perceive feedback as negative. It's, you know, I'm going to be judged or like it's an attack and something unfair, you know. But I want to tell you guys like feedback is something that's very positive. Even you, you need to learn how to give feedback to your colleagues. Even your boss should receive feedback. Okay, but do we know how to do it? Now, that's the thing. We need to learn how to do feedback properly. One of the benefits of feedback is understanding the impact of your work. You'll never know the impact of your work if you don't get feedback. 
Um, it also enables you to have better relationships at work. It also improves definitely because you know if you understand how you're impacting people in the workplace, you impact you know the impact of your work. You know you definitely grow and improve. Um, also, the, the feedback in the workplace is meant purely so that you can become uh, a better employee and you're able to meet organizational goals. Okay, and definitely feedback will help you grow. And the reason feedback fails is because people, you know, people think feedback, like there's some people, you know, when I teach guys, I teach organizations, I tell them, I teach them the mechanism of how to give feedback. And I tell them like, it's not hurting others. It's not about blaming people. It's not about shouting or comparing. If anyone, you know, if anyone here is a parent, you know that comparing people, com being compared to another person is very hurtful. Nobody wants to be compared with another person. And uh, I would like to tell you guys, like, you know, feedback is also not, if you find yourself like when you're with your boss, you're on the defensive, that's not a proper way of feedback. Um, and remember that all this feedback is about the action, not the person. Don't take notes. I mean, you're going to get these notes. Now, here, how to give proper feedback. Okay. These steps, I have found that they work. Okay, when people implement them, the problem is most feedback is normally blame games, it's normally tell you how that things went wrong. And honestly, there are ways that feedback can become better. The first step, if you're the giver of feedback, make sure that people are ready to give a feedback. So tell somebody, hey, I would like to give you feedback on, uh, for instance, they say we had an event over the weekend. I'd like to give feedback on how the event went. Uh, can we speak to, today at five o'clock? Make sure you tell somebody and tell the, sub, the person what it's about. Don't just say, can I give you feedback? That will make people just feel so stressed. Just tell the person directly, like it's about the event we had, or like us discuss. Are you available? If you're available, yes. You, know, you tell them, you know, I'll tell you, like, I can, can read you tomorrow, etc. The second step is when you're together now, sitting together and giving you feedback, just describe what happened. Concrete observation. You can be like, you can say something like, oh, the event we had, that menu is not a menu that we had discussed here in the office. What happened? Okay, don't start saying things like personal things, like that menu, were you thinking, were you listening to me? No, just say something like that menu that was served is not what we had discussed here, what happened? Okay, if the person is giving feedback, as I said, you just listen. And then if you're the person who's not giving that feedback, you say something like uh, how it made you feel. And say like, uh, you know, that menu that, that we had discussed here in the office, I thought was going to be uh, the best because of the kind of people we are dealing with, the pool that we have. But now what we served them made, that made me feel like, you know, we look like we don't care about their tastes, their preferences, etc. And if what this person said is concrete information, like, you know for a fact that yes, that menu was the wrong one. You can just avoid arguing and defending yourself, okay? And then now you can ask clarifying questions. You know, you can ask, I thought that, you know, because the caterer had this issue, I could change, I could do this. That's when now you can discuss with someone. And the final step, if you're the person who's a who's manager, please just end the feedback by describing what can be done different the next time. Because feedback is about growth. Feedback is not about blaming people. Feedback is about making sure that the next event, the next thing we do is come is better than what we had. So the main, if you, do, you should uh, be the person who's guiding that person into what is good for the next time. All right? Now, if you're the one who's receiving the feedback, acknowledge the person's point of view, thank them, and consider, you know, whether the feedback applies. If you feel like the feedback was wrong and doesn't apply, I, you might have an attitude problem. If they give you, you know, the exact concrete things of, that happened and you feel like they were wrong, you need to understand, like, now, what's the issue here? What is it? What is happening? But if it applies, you just, you just accept and move on. Okay. If you're the person giving feedback, please remember, just be friendly. Be friendly. I mean, surely, you work with this person every single day. You know, it wouldn't hurt to be just nice. Or, and always say, like, people, you know, say what worked well. You'd be amazed how much people get motivated by being told things that they're doing well. Okay? Even children, everyone, all of you, even your husband, wife, people like to be told what they're doing, what is working well. It really motivates. So do that if you can with your, with your team members. Always focus on growth. Always focus on growth because the point of feedback is to make us grow. Stick to facts. Don't have innuendos. Don't talk about personality issues. Don't say you're lazy. You don't listen. Don't have, you know, those kind of statements that are not factual, that are based on your own opinion. 
and then always ask for input. When you give someone feedback, ask for their input so that maybe maybe what you got was wrong, maybe the idea you have is, is, is wrong. Um, and then learn how to problem solve together. That's the big uh, you know, point of, of feedback. Problem solve together because you're working together and I don't need to remind you, please, just stay calm. Like really, <laughs> stay calm, be friendly. Uh, you know, it's not, it, it could be serious, but uh, you know, you're going to work together and you're gonna work together for long. So please just try to be nice. Um, if you are a manager, uh, people need to feel like they are safe with you. Okay, so ensure that what you're telling them is not something you're going to broadcast to everybody. You're going to broadcast the mistakes of your team members. You know, I know some organizations, they have WhatsApp groups. They have WhatsApp groups and you want to just blast somebody in a WhatsApp group. That will make you lose the trust of the people in your team and um, people are just going to be using your internet to search for jobs elsewhere. Yeah, and sometimes it's also good just offer positive feedback and stop there. If you know things went well, just give feedback that was just positive and end there. And um, remember to praise effort, not ability. Don't tell people things like they, they, they don't have an ability. You know, even with children, we say that you you praise their effort. You're trying. I see what you're doing and see what you did. It don't don't just say you're not smart enough. You're not. You don't have the. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that. Because that's definitely it's very demoralizing. Have you read that slide? Mm hmm. There are people who will always find a reason. They'll always find an excuse. Always find an excuse. Oh, it rained. Oh, my laptop charger was forgotten. Where? Oh, by the way, you remember? I think there are people who just come up with excuses all the time. Just own up. If you if you didn't do the right thing, if you didn't do what was supposed to be done, just own up. It's just it's a it's a it's a sign of maturity, you know? Because I've met, I have I have been with people who like you know, have like that victim, you know, it's not your fault though. I want to say like some of these things is maybe from you, how you were brought up, but feeling like you're a victim all the time. So it's like other people and other things are always to blame. But now we're adults now, we have to like craft our life, you know? And yeah, and I like to end my presentations by just um, asking people to like think of themselves. I like, I call it the Mimi tank, you know? Like based on what I've said today, like um, before I go to your question, like what's the stuff that you're gonna start? What are you gonna start doing differently from today? And what's the stuff that you're gonna stop doing? Like what is gonna go out out of your mimi tank? Yeah? That tank that that is you. What are you gonna stop? And what are you gonna start doing differently? Um, I would like guys to just like think of that when you know. And in terms of because today we, we dealt with assertive communication and how to do feedback and how to improve their work, uh, their, their communication in the workplace. So this is just a snapshot of what I do. I, I'll go into your questions next. So I think what we do is I do coaching. So I do the purpose discovery coaching. This is for people who are in a place in their lives where they feel like, uh, what, what am I here for? Okay, maybe I do enjoy my job or maybe I'm about to retire or I want to switch industries like, um, it's it's like a really fun uh, coaching program that I have. It's a purpose discovery. It helps people tap into their who they really are and also into their skills and talents and their passion. Um, that's something that we do. I also do the leadership coaching, where I work with people. Uh, it doesn't have you don't have to be a manager, but it can be like yourself. First of all, because everything just begins with self leadership, you know. So we we work with who you are, personality, your personality. What are the things you want to achieve out of life? What are the things that you can do about it? And if you do have a team, how can you lead your team? How can you motivate your team to perform? How to understand different people and their different team dynamics, etc. We also do career coaching. Um, that is just helping you, like, you know, discuss, like if you want, to, if you want to ask your question, like, uh, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Where do you see yourself, or like, what are you doing right now? Some people can't really answer that question very well. So the career coaching is basically going to help you answer that, uh, and also help you like goal set for your career, like where you want to go five years, ten years, fifteen years. Uh, we also do personal branding, uh, which is also aligned with the purpose discovery, because um, most people they want to build like their brand, like who am I? What do I stand for? What are the platforms I'm going to use to do what I want to do? Do I want to write a book? Do I want, what is it I want to do? Do I want to have a channel? Uh, so who am I and what is I want to be for the world? 
And then I also do personal wellness coaching. Uh, the personal wellness coaching is basically trying to help people like live lives, more fulfilling lives personally, um, and uh, to do with their, it's, you know, mind, body, spirit, everything. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, that's it. So I'm going to go into the questions that were asked. Okay, those are my contacts, but I'm going to go into the questions that were asked in the Excel sheet. Hi, Andre. Oh, hi. <laughs> I do have them handy, so I could I could just ask them. Oh, here, okay. So that you don't have to go for. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for the presentation, by the way. Thank you, thanks. Um. So the first one is, what would you do if your boss acts like you're in competition with them? If your boss acts like you're in competition with them, so I would I would need to understand what exactly is happening. You know, ask like what what is happening? Like what is this scenario that is like competition? Is it um is it when you are with clients? Is it like in the work? I, I would want to know the you know the exact thing that happened because competition can mean all kinds of things. Are they jealous of you? I would like to know the scenario. Okay, um, but if you find like your boss uh, your boss behaves like you're in competition, which means they try to put you down which means if they're trying to put you down, I would suggest that um, honestly, what we've learned today, like assertive communication, just ha have a sit down. You can you even, maybe your it's your own thinking that this person is behaving that way. You can just sit down and, and say, hey, this happened yesterday and I'm not feeling comfortable. Can you let me know if there's an issue that we need to discuss, uh, you know, ABCD. Um, but otherwise, if if, if this person is not someone you feel like you can have that conversation with, I like to tell people, just ask yourself, how, how, how can you put up with it? Is this something that is affecting your morale? Is it affecting your work? Is it, you know? And if it is, you definitely need to deal with it. Because uh, what will happen if you don't deal with it, you start now looking for an escape, like looking to leave the organization, looking to whatever. But if it's possible, try find a way to have a conversation. But don't tell them, like, if you're acting like you're in competition, just tell them, hey, this happened yesterday, this happened on Monday, this happened last, last week, and I wanted to know whether there's an issue that we can discuss. Just try and be assertive. They'll be very surprised. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, wow. You know? They didn't know that this, what, they didn't know how their behavior was affecting you. They, they didn't know that what they did and behave is something that is causing you stress. So just give it a try. But then you're the one who, if you're the person who asks this question, you're the one who knows exactly what you're talking about. So I don't know exactly what this competition thing is. Uh, so I think based on what I've seen today, figure out that it's something that can be sorted out via communication. Cool. Mm. Thanks, Sanji. So I was, I was actually thinking, um, mm -hmm. maybe I could share a scenario. So one time mm -hmm. I was working uh, under uh, someone and mm -hmm. uh, we had a meeting. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the director um, mm -hmm. was doing projects for people to take up. But it was one mm -hmm. of those things that was extra work, no pay. <laughs> I'm sorry, eh? so it was no, one of those things? Extra work, no pay type things. Eh? Oh, okay, okay. Of course, mm -hmm. not very few people were enthusiastic about. Uh, yes. I, I usually enthusiastic about such things. So yes. um, I was very new in organizations. I lifted up my hand. I had no idea maybe what she was talking about. Yeah, but I'm one of those people yeah. who's like, I figure it out. It's an opportunity to learn. So okay. um, I was so excited to do it, and then later mm -hmm. on, I realized mm -hmm. my boss mm -hmm. was so upset about it. So upset, and mm -hmm. uh, literally not talking to me. So the next day, um, maybe mm -hmm. just to, I'm just giving this scenario. Maybe you can see if this applies to your specific okay. situation. Mm -hmm. But what I did the next day is I just I just called the Messiah and I just said, okay, um, I noticed you're you're upset with me. Mm -hmm. You're not talking to me. What's the problem? Did I do something to upset you? Yeah, yeah uh -huh. you are, you're competing with me. Okay, thankfully mm -hmm. they were very. Yeah, I feel like you're competing with me. And like, oh, okay. Um, I don't know why you got that impression from. What happened to make you think that? Yeah, so I'm exploring. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Idea, why did you put up your hand? Why did you put up your hand? You should have conferred with me first before you 
you did that uh -huh. yeah okay. exactly so you see so, so for them uh they their style of leadership was defer mm -hmm. to me first and mm -hmm. then you go do what you want to do yeah don't don't yeah. be dependent you get my point yeah yeah but, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, you so you are new and you didn't know that this is how that kind of a boss is. I didn't, but you know, is it is it the organization that is like that? Because there's some organizations where it's like, oh, the boss is the one now, you know, you can't be fully mm -hmm. yourself. You, the boss is the one who decides for like what's <laughs> what's gonna happen or going on. Is it your particular yeah. boss or it's like the organization is like that? No, 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 it was a culture, but you see, when you're new, <laughs> you, know, you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. So, uh, but the good thing yes. is, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure because it's not like um, I, I wouldn't say it was uh, at that time a natural thing for me to do. But anyway, through just the, basically just questioning and just saying honestly, I didn't. That was not my intention. I thought that mm -hmm. if he asked for help, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I could see no one had put up their hand, I just put up my hand because I thought it would be interesting to work on the project. You know? Exactly, but yeah, but Beryl, yeah. you were assertive. You decided to take matters into your hand, co hands because you saw like uh, the behavior of these guys changed. It's funny, mm -hmm. so you were assertive. And then what happened after that phone call? Imagine they are speaking to you there. again. Said, okay, you know they, they yeah. understood the situation. Yeah, but someone yeah. Had to, someone had to speak up. Someone had to speak up, and that's why I tell people sometimes yeah. they even think that the boss is so mad at them. That you have to learn how to speak up. In fact, when you do speak up now, everything becomes out in the open. But if you're just wallowing there in your stress and you're scared, I think a lot of things will not get so. Okay. So if you can just ask this person what happened, why is it that you're doing this? Yeah, everyone is human. Okay. So just try to find out. Of course, very, the person you're describing for me, that sounds like someone with a huge ego, you know. So you, I think everyone knows their boss and how to manage, navigate the kind of people they're working with. But at least you... You are, I think you are assertive, and that's what helped that scenario. Yeah. So the next question is How do I manage a boss or owner who mm -hmm. does not commit to employees, hence high mm -hmm. turnover, then he blames others? <sighs> well, okay. Because this is the owner so, now. <laughs> this is the owner. This is the owner, and and he doesn't commit to employees. But you, 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 you've been there for a long time. You, you are not one of the people leaving. So it looks like you have a little bit of power, or you, you have stuck around. You know, you've stuck around. You know, like he's has a high turnover, and then maybe it's you who's blamed, other people are blamed. But you somehow you're still staying strong in that organization despite all these problems. So I would suggest just try have a conversation. If do you have a HR? If you don't have a HR, you just try and sit down with this person and be like and go to him like this is a situation that's affecting our organization. A lot of people keep leaving. We have to keep recruiting. We lose a lot of business hours. We lose a lot of business, a lot of money. So why can't ABCD? If you you have identified this is a problem. And you know this person, by the way, if this person blames others, it's because they're stressed. They feel stressed and they need to lash out on someone. And if you, you, based on the way you're asking this question, you have stuck around, you have never left. Why haven't you ever left? It seems like maybe you do have kind of a relationship with this person, with this boss of yours or the owner. And I think you can try to have that conversation because uh, you can be like, but, but phrase it in a way that you're thinking about the organization. You can be like, can we do ABCD? The last five people that left, they had these issues. Some of these can be addressed, etc. Just figure out, but go to the person with a solution. This this sounds like a kind of a boss who's like very stressful. So if you can go with a solution and it's not that you, you want them to do something, yeah, then you can be like, why don't we try and implement this for when we get the new people joining, why can't we uh, do ABCD and check how they're doing, you know, uh, implement something for three months, two months and see if these people stay. So go with a solution. Because I would like to understand why you you haven't left yet as well. It seems like there's something that's working for you. So I don't know. Maybe you can try and figure out how you can do that for other people. And also help this this manager or owner of the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's really that's really sound advice. How do you manage a female mm -hmm. boss whose decisions are based mm -hmm. on emotions and politics as opposed to fact? <laughs> Because you had to say female boss, like it's a, it's a, it's a female, it's not a male boss, it's a female boss with drama, bringing us drama in the office. Um, 
uh, wait, I repeat the question. It was uh, who who politics? Say again. It was. So this this boss, uh -huh. uh, the decisions are based on uh, emotions mm -hmm. and politics as opposed mm -hmm. to fact. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So uh, why, why do you, okay, you're the one who works there. You're the one who knows that these scenarios are purely based on emotions and politics huh? and not facts. And are, are these decisions affecting you? Are they like... Are they affecting you and your work in the in the workplace? By the way, I, I can feel you by the way. So having such a manager is very, very stressful. Um, but some of these people, like if you can be able to like state your case with your logic, because I see you're a person who likes prefers to work with logic and ex and facts and exactly what happened. You can, if this is something that affects you on a regular basis, uh just try and have a, a, a session, a feedback session. And this kind of if if it's this person who can just fire you, are they people who can be like uh, they don't like to be questioned, they don't like to be told. Um, you weigh your options. You weigh your options. Uh, but if it if if it's not someone you can have a conversation with, it's someone you feel like is a, it's not approachable. If you feel like it's someone who can affect your career, I tell people, just decide for yourself how long this can last. It's you know. What, what what does this job do for me? What is it doing for my skill set? Am I growing? Am I learning? Is it helping me with my own personal life in ABCD? And then decide like, you know, I'm just going out to try and be so engaged with this person and I'm going to do this for the next six months. I'm going to do this for the next two years, four years. But you have a timeline. If it's someone who cannot be removed, if it's someone who can't move and it's a situation you see like being assertive will not work and it might even be very detrimental to your career, I think just that... Um, looking for options i know that doesn't sound like a really good answer but um you, you, it's not okay to also live in a way where you're stressed all the time it's gonna make you sick and that is so true okay and then the last one yeah. we had the one mm -hmm. that came prior was how to mm -hmm. handle micromanagement from a boss especially mm -hmm. who doesn't understand the difference between hard sales and business development how do you so, okay sorry just repeat again sorry how to handle micromanagement from a boss, especially who does not mm -hmm. understand the difference between hard sales and business mm -hmm. development. Basically, they, they, they can't <laughs> differentiate uh, like strategic things and tactical things. Yeah, and, and you, what is like, what's, what's your role? What's... So I'm guessing this person is more mm -hmm. of a business development uh, yeah, and you know, then, and they... strategic work. And then they just the be hard sales. Yeah, and yeah then, like, like why you're uh, not selling? Sell, 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 sell. Yeah. Oh my, oh my goodness. Uh, first of all, micro micromanagement just doesn't help anybody. I, these are the kind of people I like to just have. If I could have a session with your boss, honestly, like because this person thinks that it's up to them to make sure that people deliver, which means they have to follow you up and down. And at the same time, they are also confusing the role that you're supposed to do. Like you have, you have a job description. I mean, um, you know what you're supposed to do and this person expects you to be this other person and, and then they're micromanaging you. I think it's good to have, a, 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 if you can manage to have a conversation um, with them as well. But, um, and and explain yourself, like, ex explain like this, uh, this is what I'm supposed to do and you keep coming to me with A, B, C, D. But in terms of micromanagement, um, I don't, I think that, that you can't help somebody you can't be the one to man to help your boss overcome his micromanagement that is now work for people like us i would like to just go there and teach them how even it's, it's very exhausting for everybody okay if if this person is micromanaging you and your team members and everyone they're also always stressed and they bring that stress to everybody in the workplace so uh if you can have a conversation you know what your job description is or hr knows or whatever just have a conversation like this is what i'm supposed to do and you keep you keep telling me this was, it has my job description changed i know that sounds like tough but um i that's what i, I, would, I would say like work with your job description unless you're an organization that is so small everybody does everything if everybody does everything because i work with these small smes and people end up, you know, you're, you're doing everything. Then just know that that's what comes with that role. And that's what comes with that organization. And what am I learning? Is there ways that I'm growing? And I'll tell you like the other person, if you get too stressed, just use a career summit, you can figure out how to improve yourself and just find a place that is more deserving of you. 
I, I yeah, someone is calling me that. Lucy. Oh, yeah, someone here mentioned uh, on the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have another question? No, no, I think that's it. So we can start off with the chat. Where, where would you like to start? I've seen someone here. David has said, um, okay, he corrected, he called me Lucy, then said Angela. At the beginning, you mentioned mm -hmm. being your full authentic self to work. You further mentioned that in Kenya, a lot of leaders are aggressive while employees are passive. What can authenticity do to bridge the gap? What can the, mm. the ah ah so now this is so the authenticity how it can bridge this gap huh you see like for instance uh, I'll I'll give you an example I I I got this uh, client and he's he told me Angela my team members they they have to be pushed I'm the one who has to keep you know this kind of micromanager you're talking about eh, uh, before. They have to be pushed. I have to keep telling them what to do. And if, if I don't tell them what, they, they have no drive. He told me these people have no self-drive. So I went, I did some, some. I had some, some questions. I talked to the team members. I was surprised. Like, like some people in the team, they were like the one guy, I remember, he was like the chairman for his neighborhood committee. Like the neighborhood where he was living, he's the chairman. He's the one who oversees things to do with the guards, collection of payments, uh, people's houses, which are, he is a proactive guy, but in the workplace, he's no, he just doesn't bring himself. Like in the workplace, he's just a guy, gets told what to do and then leaves. But he's a chairman of a big neighborhood, like, you know, and he's, he's proactive. And then another guy, I was interviewing him and he had to leave because he was at that time, you know, before Corona, he was like the chairman of a, of a funeral committee. And so he was the one who was overseeing uh, all this fundraising, you know, discussing about the funeral. The, and I'm like, these people are brilliant. Like, these people, you're telling me they have no self-drive. They only have no self-drive while in your office, while working for you. So I realized this is a culture thing. And it's this man, the boss, this guy was telling me that my people have no self-drive. I realized it's him I have to work with to allow people to become themselves like you know not trying to micromanage them not telling them what to do just giving them the bigger picture and they run with it because keep you know um he he was speaking to me like like these people are just dumb you know and i'm like no your team members are actually fantastic people it's you so it's him i had to like really work with to and to first of all teach him a lot of things to do with how individuals work personalities work and even him what is his leadership style so um if and and how authenticity works is like those people were not being authentic in their workplace in their workplace they're not being themselves they're just coming doing what they have to do because they have this guy and then they leave and then they become their authentic selves over the weekend and in the evening you know and if you, you're not yourself honestly eight hours a day when you're in the office i'm telling you a lot of your skills and talents go wasted they go wasted okay even if you're able to fulfill them after after work, you will not grow. So that's what I can answer for that. Okay. Cool. I hope that was a good answer. And then um, Milka, a boss that acts like he's in competition does not share information, leaves you out of important communication. Yeah, this is a very passive aggressive boss. Uh, you know, someone who leaves out information, leaves you out of important communication and continues to do this. No, you should have a sit down with this person, honestly. And be like, I want to be included in this communication because this is my project. This is what this is my mandate, and I need to be informed about everything that's happening. Okay. And when I'm not informed, that's why things go wrong. Like A, B, C, D went wrong because I didn't know this. I need to be informed about everything that's happening in my docket. You need to just learn how to do that. Just have that conversation. It will be difficult, but it can be done. Okay. And yeah, someone who is in, um, in co this competition thing, I, it just doesn't serve anybody. If you're a team leader right now listening to this, I mean, you really just know how you need to learn how to let your team members be themselves and to have access to everything they need to have access to, to be able to work well in the organization. Okay, Kevin asked, when you started, you mentioned something on self-awareness. Can you, oh, can you please repeat? I just said self-awareness is just really knowing yourself who you are completely, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, what are your weaknesses, who are you, what are your strengths? Just self-awareness helps you learn how to, you know, you can start growing when you know who you are. That's all it means. Um, like, for instance, if you know that one of your weaknesses, you're not a good timekeeper, you okay? You know, you're someone who 
that is not good with time, you're going to be someone who invests in like okay, preparing themselves before because you know you don't keep time. So you're, you're the guy who's going to be like, I'm going to be in a meeting 15 minutes before because I'm that person who time sometimes just, I don't know where time goes. Okay, so that's what self-awareness is because nobody's perfect. Okay, Wendy, say you have a boss that wants you to do some tasks, but has tasks that that task will go against company policy. If it goes against company policy, please don't do it. <laughs> please just um just inform. Okay, I I, I want to know what uh, what scenario it is. Like they can make you do something that's against company policy. Is it something that's even illegal? Is it something that's going to cost you? Just don't do something that's going to cost you or your career. Be able to and. As I said, when you're assertive, you learn how to say no. Can you start saying no today, Wendy? <laughs> okay? Cool. Uh, okay, how do I give feedback to a passive aggressive boss? Some of these people, you can call me to your organization to try and organize some sessions for these bosses. Um, uh, you don't give, if someone is passive aggressive, you, you, what you do is feedback is say something concrete, say ex something that exactly happened and how it affected your work. Okay. Cause some people do not want to hear if it's just, you, it, it, they'll be like, no, that didn't happen. So it has to be something that actually took place and affected your work. And then you want to give them feedback. Okay, so whatever it is that they do that is passive aggressive, if it's harming you and your work, don't tell them they're passive aggressive by they don't tell anybody you're passive aggressive or you're a bully or anything, but just be like, this happened and it affected me this way. And hopefully it can work. Um how how do you deal with junior who has a good relationship with the boss but is uncooperating with their peers? Oh, this is a big, big problem. This is a big, big problem. Um, having people who are, who uh, are favored or they, they don't meet their um... so if it's a junior, if they are cooperative with their peers and, and they're creating conflict in the workplace, is there someone else? If are there other people who are suffering with you in this? Is there someone else in your team who is also suffering because of this person? You can find, and as a team, you can have that conversation in the office, in the workplace. Because I do know this happened in one of the organizations that I consulted for. And one person was really affecting the morale of the team members. Okay, and this person was favored also. And so what happened is they were shocked. This, uh, and you will see if it's even a junior person. It's a junior person they have never even, they haven't worked for too long. Maybe they, they, need, um, they need that, that shocker to make them understand the world of work and that you don't have certain behaviors. And the senior people need to know that this is affecting all these people. So if you can come together and then try to have a conversation that is mature and like, you know what I mentioned? Please be clear, A, B, C, D happened. A has happened, B has happened, C has happened, and this is causing, you know, X, Y, Z. So please just, if you can manage to get some of your team members, because if it's only you that it's affecting, Maybe it might be difficult because it could mean that there's something, there's something like maybe I'm not aware of if it, uh, this junior person is just you that the, the, the scenario is affecting. Is it maybe you guys, you're clashing? It's, I, I would need to know. But if you are many of you, you can work together to, to bring an end to this be behavior. How could one deal with an authoritative boss who wants things done his way, whether bad or good, and then things don't work as desired, he turns a flame on you? Oh gosh, these people. Um, yeah. So, did you try and voice the proper way to do things? Will Will Kista? Did you try to be assertive? I'd like to know whether you tried to be assertive, and then you were not able to communicate. Because if you saw that things are bad, what this boss is suggesting is bad, and you still did it, and that's why it didn't work out. You know, you will definitely be blamed. So, I would just advise you to start. Start having a voice. Start knowing how to like uh, speak up, because if if someone ad tells you to do, um, if someone gives you all, uh, tasks that you feel that's not the proper way to do things, and you still do them, and then the, you're blamed. Yeah, you deserve the blame. But okay, sorry to say so. But learn just how to be more assertive. Um, Josephine is asking, how do you do the boss who does who does take advice from his employees? The later he then later he comes to blame others. I didn't know. 
how do you deal with a boss who does not maybe take advice from employees, but later comes to blame? Same thing, same thing. Just learn, just um, just figure out how to start to, to have a voice to speak out more, to speak out more. People, you know, people will be surprised if you're someone who is just a passive communicator. People might get surprised. But then once you start learning how to have a voice, you will be amazed. You'll be shocked by how much impact that you can have around your work in your workplace. Lynette is asking, what is the best way of dealing with an employee who's assertive at the same time comes out as an aggressive person? They can, you can be assertive and aggressive. If you're assertive, you, you consider other people. You consider other people if you're an assertive communicator. So this is definitely an, if it's an aggressive person. Those those shouters in the workplace, um, uh, if they're your colleague, if it's, if it's not some, if it's your employee, if you're their manager, you need to tell them how this behavior is affecting others in the workplace. If you're their manager, you can tell them, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you can, um, the way that you speak to other people is affecting their morale. Uh, I would like people here to be respectful and, you know, uh, listen to one another and nobody uh, should be, making other people feel like they like they are less than they are etc you can try and have that conversation if it's someone who reports to you what's the best way to deal with the passive aggressive as an aggressor manager yeah these passive aggressive people are everywhere it's because people haven't learned how to communicate properly unfortunately so the best way to do such a manager is as i'm saying just learn how to become more assertive more assertive this behavior of theirs you need they need to know that it's um so you need to, to 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 have the concrete thing that happened, and why it was wrong because A B C D happened. So you can try have that feedback session. Uh, if there are people who can affect your your job, if they can get you fired because you're starting to become a, a you know people say you're becoming kichangumu, but not kichangumu. A certain people actually listen to others. But if it's someone who is maybe your employer, um, you can just say, how long can I put up with this? And am I learning? Am I growing? Are there other opportunities? Are there other opportunities for me in the workplace for me to move on, to move to another department, to move to another location, to move so you can work towards that? Um, what else? Okay, thank you, Ricky, for saying that. The team leader. How can you work with aggressive community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All these people who are shouters and they make other people feel less in the workplace, they cause a lot of stress. They cause a lot of stress. And people actually quit jobs because of them. So if you're one of those people, if you, you know, just um, the best way to do it is to respect. Um, everyone is talking about a ag passive aggressive manager, aggressive communicator. Oh, Yvonne, good on you. You're assertive. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ibrahim, can you, can, can you be aggressive and assertive at the same time? No, no. <laughs> Maybe you can be aggressive, uh, but you see aggressive people don't care about other people. That's what I like to remind people, you know? If you're someone who's uh, always like uh, shouting at others and not considering them, you're aggressive, you're not assertive. Assertive people know how to communicate. They know how to make other people, they know how to listen to others and hear their the opinions and views and, you know, uh, yeah. Pauline, one of the people reports to me is an aggressive communicator. Wow, reports to you. And others on the team sense her aggressiveness and I end up with the team that's so aggressive to me. In return, I have learned to limit communication and demand respect about language. So stressful. Yeah, Pauline, I can imagine this is very, very stressful. Um, so, so what can happen is like, um, there's one organization that I I worked for and uh, we, we, we had... Um, a director who was also uh we got a director who was okay we ha i had a colleague who was quite an, an aggressive person a colleague but then we got a director who was able to like come and um and that even helped me like later when i started work, doing this work that i do he taught people in the team to, sp to speak out the things that are affecting them is this something that pauline that you can do in your workplace like you can just but you need to know that you can handle everything that comes out of that. You need to sit people down and have a, it's a, okay, I call it coaching conversation, but you know, it's a conversation where people need to know how their behavior is affecting the workplace. If it's something that you can do, try. 
I can guide you, you can sidebar with me on how I, I can maybe uh, send you some, some some documents to just you so you can learn how to deal with this kind of scenario. Because if other people are becoming even aggressive towards you and you're their team leader, and now you you limit your communication, that's 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 detrimental to the workplace. It can't you can't do this. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable in the long run. And people need to learn. So even you, you need to start asserting yourself. So start asserting yourself so you can learn to just have some bit of respect. And like asserting yourself means like you call out, you call out bad behavior. Call out bad behavior in a way that's also caring. You know, that you're being, you know, without being aggressive. Can you try, can you try one of those things? I think it would work. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, respect is key. How do you do the supervisor who believes that unless you're running, of the scale then you're not working. This is a problem in our culture here. Uh, since that her style of working, then you make a small mistake, you'll be ready to be up. And especially how are people doing it right now with, with social distancing and working from home? People who want to just see you running up and down, uh, you know. Um, how do you do the such a supervisor? Now, a lot of these issues you're giving me are issues that me, I need to do with those managers. Because there's nothing that I think you can do. You cannot teach, you cannot teach your manager how to, you know, stop micromanaging you guys. Mm. If you make a small mistake and you're berated badly, that also means that the feedback is not good. The feedback session was uh, was is not successful if it's about berating you. You can ask, ask this person when they berate you. By the way, just ask them. Please tell me ways in which you want me to grow. Just ask them, what do you think? How do you think I can do this better? Then now you put the task on them because if they're quarreling you, then they should have a solution for you. So ask them, how can I do this better? What do you think I should do next time? Then, then they can maybe start thinking of, oh, okay, I'm supposed to be the one guiding these people. But generally it's not your duty to, uh, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to teach uh, your, your, your manager something. If you're a team leader, I can work with you and help, you know, with your team. But your manager needs, um, if you can have a feedback session and tell them and be able to explain, I did this, 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 this is what I was doing. And this is when the mistake happened. Fine. But you can, you can try and make them become uh, better leaders by asking them, how do you want me to grow? How do you want me to grow? Um, you mentioned weakness at the start. I don't know if it's related to the topic, but I'd like to ask, how do you answer such a question in an interview? um for them for those actively i think barely this will be dealt with right someone's asking you mentioned weakness in the start i don't know if it's related to the topic but i'd like to ask how you answer such a question in an interview for those people actively looking for a job i think that will be answered very right yeah it will but um you can take a stab at it but we'll be covering um quite a bit weekly when we have the sessions tomorrow because tomorrow we really start to focus on the job search. So we're talking about personal branding. We'll have uh, two recruiter sessions um, tomorrow and the next days. So please just, uh, you can you can hold off on a lot of those questions, but Angie, if you feel like you want to answer it, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, so the thing with weaknesses is people really don't want to know what you're really bad at and what you, I, I feel like you should say things that you're working on. Like for instance, um, you can say you you can say um, I find that I'm I'm someone who can be uh, let me see for an example that is that is good yeah I'm someone who takes on too much work and sometimes I end up you know I feel like sometimes I get burned out and but I'm trying to learn how to manage my time well how you know say things that show that uh, a you're someone who <laughs> works really hard. And someone also who um, is growing. Don't say things that are just going to make you look like they don't want to hire you. Like you can, like someone said, I have a bad temper. One time I was interviewing, uh, the weakness was saying, I have a bad temper. Uh -huh, well, like we don't want somebody who has a bad temper. So you figure out things that you can say that are normal, like uh, not normal. Maybe you do have a bad temper. Okay, please don't share that with the people interviewing you. But and start working on that temper. Nobody would like to work with bad tempers, by the way. Okay, uh, nobody even likes to be in a relationship with people with bad tempers. It's it's a whole it's a whole other topic. But um, so figure out how to answer questions in a way that shows that you're growing. You can say I am someone sometimes who who uh, finds myself like um, 
uh, there's some, someone said something really good another time we were interviewing. They said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with, with news and, and Twitter. That's something I'm trying. So, you know, we're like, but he's like, you know, now I, I just switch on my phone in the evening when I go home. Something like that. And you're like, oh, there's someone who knows what's happening. It's not such a bad uh, weakness. It's like you're someone who's in, in touch with all the news, so it's not too bad. So just don't say things that are going to cost you your job. Don't say I have a bad temper. Don't say I I find I'm a, I'm a bad timekeeper. I don't keep time. Nobody wants nobody wants that. So figure out how to you know. But be honest also. So find out what is that you know. Some people we are different. Everyone is different. Okay. Like me, I am very energized by people. Like that can be a weakness also. Like me, I'm very, very energized by people. And sometimes I find myself like, uh, I can spend so much time with people. You can, you know, as you can tell, maybe I'm extroverted. And uh, so if if I have tasks that are to do with people, I really, really enjoy them. And if it's tasks to do with, with um, Excel sheets and documentation and I'm on my own, I feel so drained. So, I mean, it's good to just know who you are and just, you can say some things, but things that are not going to cost you. I hope I answered that. Uh, no, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just, but I'm a certified life coach. My background is in communication. That's what I studied in the university. And I worked on leadership programs in uh, in the different organizations. And as Barry mentioned, I've worked in India. I've done projects in Ghana. And I went to do a project also in the UK. So I'm not a psychologist, but as I guess based on how I'm speaking, you can tell like people are my passion. Okay, and getting put to drive. So I hope that answers it. Um, it has become like a part of job description. I don't understand what Peter, Peter didn't understand what you said, but it's okay. Okay, I don't see any more questions. I think I've answered all of them, guys. Thank there you. There's one more, I see. Okay. From Wendy. Uh -huh, which one? There. She asks, How do you deal with a boss that questions your interview? Oh, fact, I think oh that's at the top, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because she'd mentioned something about um, if you're being asked to do something that's against company policy. Yeah. yeah. How do you the question? question you take yeah. Yeah. Why the que my question to you? Uh, wh why? What are? What has made this person question your integrity? Is it someone who's like a paranoid boys, boss? The people who are just paranoid, they don't trust people. They, well, that one, um, you'd have just to prove yourself. You know, by the trust is under. Eh? Trust, you cannot tell someone to trust you. All of us, we know trust is earned. So um, is this something that happened? Um, you know, I'd like to know what it is that's exactly going on for this person not to believe, uh, to trust your integrity. Okay, so if it's something that happened and you're not, you're not being able to explain yourself well, um, and you know that you didn't do anything that's against, um, that's wrong, um, you need to have a conversation. But is this an ongoing thing of a boss who just doesn't trust? Trust you, trust your integrity, and maybe your work is in finance, is in handling money. Um, you just have, all I can tell you is prove yourself. Just prove yourself with the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I think that's really, that's really great advice. Thank you so much, Angie. So I think um, part of our take homes is Number one, there are very many people who don't feel in control. Like you said, uh, these bosses we feel are bullying us are also themselves very scared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. In fact, if, if I forgot to say that, I should. Yeah, people who are just stressing other people, it's because they are, they are so overwhelmed with stress themselves. Themselves, yeah. And actually, what yeah. they're really telling is, I have no idea what I'm doing. But yeah. no one will, no one, like, I don't know what's going on, but I just want to see all the balls on the floor. <laughs> Let me just see the all, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, just remember, it's in, at the end of the day, it's not really about you. This person is really just reflecting the in a in a exactly. Self, yeah? yeah, it's called projection. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah and then yeah, yeah. you know, the second thing I think for me that uh, mm -hmm. is really important is we just need to learn to speak out. You know, if you're mm -hmm. unhappy, if you are yes. stressed out, if you're overwhelmed. You know, yes. if your employee, like your 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 teammates are bothering you, you you the people reporting to you are overwhelming you. You need to speak out, yeah, yes. because it's yes. not helping you, and it's not. And you know the funny thing about um, passive aggression, 
yeah, because yeah. clearly that's a common thing, is you think yeah. that by being silent, you're going to hold the peace, but actually it, it always backfires. People will get even more upset with you mm-hmm. for being silent yeah then well, yeah yeah spoken, right? yeah and a lot of things uh, actually a lot of people are experts at miscommunication not communicating basically you yeah. know no, nobody's going to know the things you're going through even when i'm going to tell you your personal lives if you're not sharing what's happening and what are the things you're feeling and nobody's going to know mm-hmm. no one can read your mind so just try and learn how to just become more assertive exactly exactly mm-hmm. yeah and then um i think lastly i really like that Mm -hmm. you mentioned this everyone has their own breaking point you know um yeah i know for me like same place that i was working in one time i i was just going on my business in the office Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then i found one of my peers was crying at her desk crying Mm. like you know properly crying and i asked her what's going on Uh oh you know it's my boss you know they're upset Mm -hmm. with me all the time and things like that and i was like oh my gosh because i have a very strong sense of personal justice it's one of my values yeah I yeah to, uh-huh. and I was like, i'm sorry what workplace is this you're trying to to build yeah you need to talk to these people see now this type of thing that's happening yes. and stuff then you know what he said yes. he told me ah, but burial you know some of us are not strong enough uh, to handle work pressures and i was like oh my gosh what what <laughs> I know, like, that was so weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but see, yeah. Basically, in as much as he was wrong, uh, there yeah. is a little bit of truth there. You know, there's just some things mm. uh, Angie can take, and I, as Burial, will not be able to take. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that doesn't mean that we accept bad behavior. When we're not you accepting know. bad behavior, out of the question. But yeah, yeah, it's the truth, and so you need to know what that point is for you. Yeah, exactly. Don't sit in your office dying every day you know um i remember one time being told of a guy who lives near where i live and mm-hmm. he he comes home every day he works in an accounting firm in kenya i won't mm-hmm. spoil their name mm-hmm. uh-huh. he, he works there and he's stressed out and every day he comes he comes home and he's just yeah. drunk every day Angie. yeah so, i've seen these one. i've seen I have been with people who are feeling suicidal because of their boss. Suicidal. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I, I even have um, someone I, I I know, actually I know him from childhood, and he's, he was like a, a top lawyer in um, in some farm here in Nairobi, I would say, but he quit last year. I met, so this year we met in January. He, I asked him, so what are you doing? He's like, I quit. And I was working Saturdays, Sunday, every day I used to go home at 11 p.m. at midnight, I've taken a break. He was earning a lot of money. He was like, Angela, even if I don't work for the next two years, I'm fine. I'm a lawyer. I can decide what to do. But I didn't know that I was living such a stressful life. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow. And yeah, and he told me like, you know, he's not able to have a relationship. He's not been able to have a date anybody. He's just works and works. And that law firm is such a big law firm. Like his boss, you know, sometimes you have to call him at 1 a.m. He's like, why are you? You've gone home. <laughs> One. I'm like, what is this? So, <laughs> yeah, Mili- yeah militant can... bosses. Yeah, Very but, militant. Um, yeah. yeah, you have to decide for yourself when it is like, you know, you have to take care of yourself at the end of the day. Yeah, and so for me on a personal level, this is such mm-hmm. a passionate topic. I mean, that's why I've just let us go over. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I've, I've just seen the time. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a really big issue for people. But yes. for me, um, mm-hmm. I personally saw this in my life. You know, mm-hmm. once when I was working and mm-hmm. someone in our building literally jumped to his desk as we were mm-hmm. in the office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, very nice job, very high flying, like you too, but he was mm-hmm. very, very miserable. Like that has never left my mind. You know, yeah. and secondly, yeah. when my friend committed suicide, yeah, oh dear. and mm-hmm. he was, you know, at his funeral, we were all thinking, mm-hmm. but he was always there for everyone. He was always involved in everyone's life, but he was so miserable. You know, now when the yeah. layers were being peeled off by his family, and we were just thinking, he was just pretending to be okay, just smiling in the office. You know, yeah, I don't see anyone. I am just you know, yeah, it, it is bad, guys. It is bad. Yeah, career is. In- but nothing beats your your own mental health. You, we would rather that you are sitting at home 
and yeah. you are at peace than you're yeah. living somewhere that's killing you every day. Exactly. So anyway, so that's why, you know, I, I guess Angie and I share that passion. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. why, that's an important yeah. topic. So yeah. I would really like, I think that my takeaway for you, for you guys would mm-hmm. be number one, because me, I'm one of those people who is like, take action immediately. Not that you go and talk to your boss about these things we've talked about immediately, but just think about, you know, like two, two things that you can do. Number one, I can, I can maybe, I don't know, do what I can write down. You know, if you're scared of what you'll say, maybe I can write down what I'm going to tell my boss or my peer or my colleague. Use that method that Angie told us, you know, you start with the good, yeah, and the way it makes me feel, and I, I would like to help you, so you tell me how I can help you also, and just write that down for yourself, yeah, and maybe tomorrow as we start off, you can share a little bit, you know, even if it's privately, just share so that we can all learn from it, but make the effort for the, for your sake, imagine you're worth that effort, yeah, you you shouldn't be living in fear and panic every every hour of your life. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think I commented privately that they're just people who enjoy conflict, you know? Yeah. So there are people who are not even just aggressive or aggressive. There are it's it's um yeah, we call them narcissists. Yeah. And that's that's a whole other problem, Angie, yeah. I know. Oh, that's so, a whole, no, that's, that's why I yeah. Think there are yeah. some things that are, they are not even um, things that you know I can you know two step plan. That's a yeah. whole other behavioral challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. But narcissists, I can just tell you right now, narcissists, narcissists don't change. Like they just have, they just find new victims. So if there's someone who's a narcissist, figure out how to like um, disengage, disengage. Because narcissists, you know, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a a whole like personality problem, and they don't see it, and they'll never see it. And people tend to like narcissists a lot in the beginning, so they're very charming, very likable, etc. And then they're they're just cruel people. So yeah, until yeah. they realize you like them, then they turn on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So guys, I just oh Isaac, yes, we'll be sharing recordings of all sessions, all sessions. Yeah. Um, give us some time. You know, after we've done all of the sessions this week, we will then put them together nicely for you somehow, where you can be accessing them. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, I mean, this is really about our life. I, I think a lot of these things also touch on our personal lives. Think about your personal life too. Yes, Andy. I don't know how I can thank you enough. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us feel like at least our hearts have vented today. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. so welcome. Yeah. 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 So I'm glad. I'm glad I did this. Yeah. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm glad to have everyone on the call as well. And thank you so much for being so open uh, and sharing. I hope that has also brought some some clarity for you. Yeah. And so. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be covering personal branding and then in the afternoon, I'll be taking you through personal branding. And then uh, in the afternoon, we're going to have Vicky Karuga who owns a pro, an assessment firm. And we're going to be talking about how assessments are used uh, for uh, recruitment, for personal development and why they would be important for you to also invest in if that's something that you're thinking about, yeah? Yeah, so... Um, yeah okay so so mary uh it's a little bit difficult i'm just answering some question here yeah? um Mary, it's a bit difficult sometimes to stream with video where where the speaker is live as well as having the the presentation there because for different people they may not it may not be smooth and that's why we are we're not doing it it's not that we are scared of being seen <laughs> so yeah so i just want to thank you so much guys and have a good evening all right bye Bye-bye.